Good evening, Starville Church. I hope you're doing well this Wednesday evening. We're so thankful we can be together and that the Lord has a service and a time to meet with us tonight. He's made an appointment with us, and I'm thankful for that. I'd like to just encourage you, this is a special time of prayer right now, and we're having special prayer times at the church for an hour every day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 a.m., Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at 7 p.m. We'd like to invite you to those prayer times that we would see the Lord come and meet with us. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. And we need that right now. I think all of us can agree with that. So I'd like to encourage you, participate, but also just on your own, set aside a special time of prayer, meeting with the Lord, that he'll touch us as only he can. Well, with that, we're going to open in prayer for a service tonight and just ask that the Lord would touch us, that we would respond to him. Heavenly Father, we come to you with thanksgiving. We come to you with praise. We just ask that you would be exalted in the places where we are tonight. Lord, whether we're in our home watching our TV, whether we're on the road looking at our mobile phone, Lord, we just ask that you would be with us, that we would feel your presence and respond to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. Let's worship together as we sing, He brought forth His people with joy. He brought forth His people with joy. He brought forth His people with gladness. He gave them the land of their enemies. And He brought forth His people with joy. I will rejoice in the victory. The victory He has won for He has stripped the enemy. We'll sing and dance and shout to the glory of the sun, for he brought forth his people with joy. He brought forth his people with joy. He brought forth his people with gladness. He gave them the land of their enemies, and he brought forth his people with joy. I will rejoice in the victory, the victory he has won, for he has stripped the enemy, and he has overcome. We'll sing and dance and shout to the glory of the sun, for he brought forth his people with joy. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing songs unto him, talking of all his wondrous works, oh glory. Let the earth and rejoice and sing with joy. He brought forth his people with joy. He brought forth his people with gladness. He gave them the land of their enemies, and he brought forth his people with joy. I will rejoice in the victory, the victory he has won, for he has stripped the enemy and he has overcome. We'll sing and dance and shout to the glory of the sun. Call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing songs unto him, talking of all his wondrous works. Oh, glory in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice and seek the Lord. upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing songs unto him, talking of all his wondrous works. Oh, glory in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice and seek the Lord.
Amen. You may be seated. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much that we can come before you with each thing that's on our heart, Lord, each request, and we just make those known before you now, even in our heart. We ask, Lord, that you would just move on behalf of your people. We thank you, God, for your wonderful provision for each one of us and just your hand upon our lives. Lord, we just continue to trust you with the concerns that we have, Lord, the healing needs and traveling mercies as well. Lord, we just bring those before you and we ask, Lord, that you would continue to meet in the needs of Starville and our families and our friends that we uphold before you, Lord. We ask that you would speak to our hearts tonight. Lord, give us a living word that would encourage us and cause us to grow and move on in you. We just thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Well, good evening. Welcome to Wednesday evening service. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that you bring light to us, and we just ask for the coming of your Holy Spirit to bear witness to your word in our hearts and that it may find fruitful ground to grow and produce fruit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight we'll be covering what the Bible says about appointments. And... There's so many appointments in the scripture, it's really hard to narrow down, but uh, I'd just like to consider some natural examples by way of introduction. 
So how do we handle sharing a space, a place, someone's time to exchange goods or services? Our usual answer is an appointment. If we had 50 people come to the dentist at one time and come there, I mean, first of all, there wouldn't be enough parking spots at the dentist. There wouldn't be enough chairs. The dentist can't see everybody in the same day. So to manage the limited space, limited opportunities, everyone has to share by way of appointment. And that way everyone gets a turn, they have their time with the dentist, and they can move on and the next person comes. So some general courtesies concerning appointments is that we don't show up unannounced, we show up on time, and we're there to accomplish something. There's a common goal in that appointment. Now, just last year, we could go to the Secretary of State's and just walk in, take our business, there'd be a wait, and protocols have changed so that this year, you need an appointment to see Secretary of State and handle business. And I don't think it's too different from how we meet with the Lord. There's times when he's very near and he's very accessible. And then there's other times where he withdraws himself and it takes some seeking. It takes an appointment, an effort to be able to reach him. So just moving on towards the word, I'd like to consider the concept of the Lord making an appointment with us. So us coming to meet with God and the scriptural example I have is that uh, Moses was asking God to reveal his glory and God's response was that he didn't just do it right then and there, but he made an appointment for Moses. In Exodus chapter 33, in verses 21 through 23, it says, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. And so the Lord's response was, Moses, Let's make an appointment. I have a place and there's a time and I'm going to pass by and I'll reveal my glory to you like you're asking. And so this this is a very amazing thing. Not many people would have that kind of access to God where they can request something and right there God has an answer or he says, not right now, but this is when and where. But There are times in our own lives where God will come and he'll begin stirring. He'll begin drawing in our hearts. You know, just put aside what you're doing. Come spend some time with me. Well, that's a special appointment where God is drawing us to come aside from our busyness, come aside from our goals and intentions, and put that to rest for a while. Step aside and meet with him. And sometimes God calls us to a place that he's prepared. Um, he could say, you know, go for a walk. I'll, I'll speak something special to you. Or go for a drive. Go to the market, get some milk. And we could question, Lord, I'm not out of milk yet. What's going on? Why should I walk? Why should I drive? But... If we can put aside our reasoning and make that time to follow what God is speaking, we could gain keys or victories to an area of struggle, or we could gain a word for someone else in a situation. We may find a greater revelation of God, a greater impartation of his spirit and peace. We don't know if we don't follow. And then there's other times where we have to prepare a place to meet with God. Now, in the life of Moses, he had his set place, but ultimately that place would become the tabernacle that we call Tabernacle of Moses. It's where Moses went to meet with God and the glory cloud would descend 
Moses could meet with God, get answers, and go. And that was possible because a place was prepared. It took effort on the part of Moses, the leadership in Israel, and all the people to work towards that preparation. But once that preparation was done, the Lord could come on the scene. The Lord could give answers and revelation. He could give forgiveness of sins because that was a part of the tabernacle program. But none of that could have happened if there was no preparation. And so for us, I mean, Jesus talks about praying in our closet. Our closet could be the car. It could be a room. It it could be not necessarily a specific, uh, how to say, a place like a closet just because Jesus said nothing else is going to work. But the object is that we have a place prepared where we can meet with him. And that's really the point, a special place that's special for him and special for us. Likewise, David wanted to prepare a place for God. Um, It's interesting. He wanted to bring the ark and glory of God to Jerusalem, but he had failed in his first attempt. Some of that was some protocols that were not being followed in the law, but another aspect was that there wasn't really a place prepared for the ark to rest. But after David did some praying and seeking, he found out there's protocol. There has to be a preparation. There has to be a place of rest. And then the ark could come and God could meet. So it's upon us to prepare that place, whatever that may be, wherever that may be in our lives. And then we can have that deeper fellowship with God. And making or arriving at that place could be a struggle. Obviously, the enemy of our soul doesn't want us meeting with God. He wants to hit us with all kinds of distractions or better ideas. There's another way I could be using my time. Does does God really show up? Is he really listening? We need to cut through those doubts and those evil questionings and trust that we need to meet with God. And yes, it will be worth it. So for David, it didn't just happen. He had to overcome some enemies. He had to enter a place of rest. And yes, he prepared the tabernacle of David, but ultimately he prepared the way for the temple to be built. And that didn't come without contest. It didn't come without struggle. All of David's life, there was wars and struggles. But the price he paid prepared the way for a reign of peace when Solomon could build that temple. But it was only possible because of the preparations David made. And so that basically covers a place There's also a time. God is Lord of times and seasons. What worked before may not always work. Now, an example of this could be David seeking the Lord, and he gives a command to come up against the Philistines from one direction, and there's a great victory. Again, the Philistines assemble themselves, and David seeks counsel. Should I go up like before? And God says, don't do what you did before. I want you to go over by mulberry trees and wait until you hear marching in the trees because then the angels are marching to battle before you. And so for that battle, there was an appointed time. Any time couldn't work. And the forces of Israel on earth had to be in sync in timing with the forces that were in heaven for David to have the victory against the Philistines. And in our lives, God has appointed times for victory. And it can be easy to be frustrated and just want to to just charge and go for it. Victory now or bust. But we want to be sure that we're marching in God's timing and not running off on our own. We want to be sure that we're 
walking in the appointed time. Now, in another aspect, the Lord can, again, meet us when we're busy. He begins to draw us. That's the time to meet with God. Now is the time. You know, it's the verse that now is the hour of salvation. When God is drawing, that's the time to jump on that meeting with him. And apart from that, we want to have a time set aside to meet with God. Um, It's so easy to get busy with this life. It's so easy to be consumed with cares, other appointments, family responsibilities, work responsibilities. We can just be weighed down and drowned with other cares if we don't make time for the Lord. And it's for our life. It's for our life. It's literally that important to spend time with him. As the days are becoming more dark and more challenging, we need more time with him so that we can continue walking in the light. And then there is a purpose. God has purposes for us in meeting with us. Now, for Moses, it was a greater greater revelation of the glory of God. And while Moses had God in that moment, he also used it to intercede on behalf of the children of Israel. And so there's ways where God can bless us, but we can also seek God for blessing and forgiveness of others. Another appointment that could come is there's times when God visits and he makes an appointment to meet with us. And the example I have for this is the visitation of Jesus. And it's a very sobering thought because we can miss visiting with the Lord. We can miss the appointment he has. In Luke chapter 19, verses 41 through 44, it says, And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you, when your enemies will set up a barricade around you, and surround you, and hem you in on every side, and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you, because you did not know the time of your visitation. And this was a problem that Jerusalem had again and again. Throughout the history, God would send prophets. God would send righteous people to speak to Jerusalem. And the response to that word was persecution and stoning or murder of the prophets. And true to form, They persecuted Jesus. So a lot of times we can reason in ourselves, well, it'll be different next time. Yeah, when the big tests come, I'll handle it. It's the little things that establish what our big response will be. So we don't want to blow off the word of the Lord. We don't want to blow off his visitation when it's in the little things. Because those little things are stepping stones to the big thing. There are times and seasons in our life when Jesus shows up to see how we are coming along. There's visitations where maybe he's pleased, maybe there's more work to be done. But he comes to inspect us and see how we're doing. There's appointed times and trials to reveal where we're at, how we're doing. What is the strength of our metal? And I don't think that's so much for him to see, but he has to show us where we're at so we can make those corrections and we can go on to hit the mark. But the amazing thing is that we get to choose. We get to choose if we have a good visitation, he knocks and we open the door, we had things ready for him, and we're able to feast and fellowship together. Or perhaps we're not ready and He's not pleased with that. Maybe there's a break in fellowship or something else that happens. We don't want to take a a stumble, a fall, because of not minding that we've got to keep moving forward. But we want to continue walking with him. And when he visits, 
we're ready to enter into what he's bringing with him. And finally, I want to cover the concept of the ultimate appointment, and that is our time to go when we leave this world. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it says, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that the judgment. So right here the scripture is telling us in no uncertain terms, we get only one life. There is only one chance to get it right for eternal life. We get one life and then we go to judgment. And this is a very important concept to understand. It's our most important appointment. Are we in grace? Are we hidden with Christ when we pass on? Or are we lost and forever lost? There's a lot of confusion in these times about what's waiting in the hereafter. Some people think they'll negotiate or bargain with God to get into heaven. Other people have no concept of God. They think maybe they'll come back as a cat or something else. But the scripture speaks in no uncertain terms. There is no reincarnation. There's no extra lives. There's only one life. And so it's very crucial that we have a meeting with the Lord through salvation, that we walk in the light, that we read his word, and that we pray and have appointments with him so he can be Lord of our life. So will we give our whole life to the Lord? You know, some time ago I was driving in the car and one life is so limiting. There's so few things we could do or choices we could make. And I was kind of thinking, if I had a hundred lives, what would I do? Um, would I be a thrill seeker? Would I do a different job? And, um, you know, what I come down to is I've got only one life. So the most important decisions I make are what I make now. What would I do with my one life? And the answer is give it to Jesus. You know, not just giving my heart to Jesus and experiencing salvation, but if I had one life to give, to lay down, by his grace, I want to give it for him. In the Revolutionary War, there was an American spy named Nathan Hale who was discovered by the British, and they were going to execute him, and his final words were, were I have but one regret that I have only one life to give for my country. But in a similar way, we have only one life to give, and we can give that to the Lord, be it in dying daily, denying ourselves, or perhaps giving our life as an offering to him and laying it down, be that in persecution or something else. We don't know what will come our way, or if it just comes to our time and we die of natural causes. But we want to be sure that this one life that we have, we give it to him and we live it for him thoroughly. So just in closing, I'd like to summarize that we want to be sensitive to the drawing of the Holy Spirit. We want to have a place and time prepared to meet with God daily. And we want to be prepared for eternity with God. You know, there's nothing worse than missing him. He is the attraction. He is everything in heaven. He is why we want to be there. So we want to make our appointment with him and keep it and be sure that we don't miss out. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Ron, thank you for that message. Very appropriate for all of us on appointments. And Ron brought out three points as I saw it. The first one is a place. We all need to have a place of meeting with the Lord. Second was a time. It's important we set aside time. We have a time, but we set aside time. And that final one is really about responding to him, responding to him in those moments. The Lord wants to make an appointment with every one of us, really multiple times a day, where he meets us, where he touches us, where we respond to him. So as we go to pr prayer tonight, just in the close of this service, 
Would you just ask that you would make the appointments that the Lord has with you? Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this message, Lord, an encouraging message to us. Lord, we want to respond to you. Lord, we want to have a place. We have a, want to have a time, and we want to respond to you when we're with you. Lord, we ask that you would touch us. We're your people as we're at home or as we're on the road, wherever we are right now, that you would meet with us in a special way. We long for you in Jesus' name. Amen.